this dovetail with another book I did a while ago, um, uh, authors who'd written about the arrival of a young Jewish girl who, you know, who had the boyfriend on the ship. Uh, he didn't have 16 w wives with him, yeah. but came over and. Oh, really? uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and this was the establishment of the community, which this is the deteriorate. So if you, can you fill in that, that history for us? What is truth when it's edited? You know, often like, okay, here's your national history, and to not believe it is to betray the nation. And Well, if you leave that out, how is that a complete truth? And if it's an incomplete truth, how is it a truth at all? And I just got interested in that. Also, how it fed into the Argentine stories of the Jews, uh, basically at the turn of the last century when they... Uh, that was sort of the height of it when they uh, showed up in Buenos Aires, just like, you know, Jews are known for being tailors and, you know, the rag man and the, all these jobs that new immigrants from Russia take or Eastern Europe. Um, and, and Argentina, again, I preface it with an explanation, is they were in this business uh, in sort of appropriate percentages, not that it's all, all appropriate, but matching percentages to their part of the community where if the French were 20% of the new Argentine population, then they had 20% of the business. But uh, they were white slavers, Jewish pimps and whores, and they had these, you know, this is, this again, it's such a dark industry as if, you know, some of these women, the choice was to starve to death or die at the spindle or they were tricked into it and thought they were actually marrying someone or they were headed to agricultural colony, you know, in Moisesville and were talked into it off the boat or took this, you know, surely unglamorous job. This, uh, they were very ashamed of this part of their community and uh, shunned them and these people. To me, I, I get, again, my last book was about the balance between religious and secular and more, I got more and more interested in community or ideas of loyalty and ideas of identity. And I said, what is it that, you know, these people, these prostitutes, they wanted to be buried as Jews and the Jewish community said, we won't have you and forced them to have their own graveyards. And they went out and did it. I mean, they got their yes. own graveyard, they had their own shul, they, they, they wanted yeah. desperately to die as Jews. Yeah, yeah, I went to, and I went a couple of months ago to see it, I didn't go until after. It's unbelievably moving to me, this idea that somebody could sit in judgment of somebody else in that way is so shocking to me. I mean, I get, obviously, I understand where the shame comes from, but in a, just a, that overall in the epic way that I see things. I thought, like, what is it to sit in judgment? And even now to go back in 2007 and see this graveyard and see it, you know, pristine on the outside of the swarm and inside weeds and crumbling stones and stones knocked over and think, like, you exact this punishment on these people for eternity. To me, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really, a, you know, a moving idea about how communities relate to each other. But yes, they, they, they basically tried to forget it all. They denied this ever was, in a sense. It was actively forgotten. So I've created for the main character his job is he's both the only one who will not forget this community. He keeps the memory alive for 25 years, saying, how can we forget this? He's a son of a whore himself. And then he's the one when the government changes and it's dangerous to have any kind of past he goes in there and uh, takes money to go in and chip away the names of the shamed. Kaddish has this very strange schizophrenic relationship with this this walled off Jewish cemetery for poors and pimps that he he's the one who takes care of it, but at the same time he's obliterating yes. the names and and he's attracted to it and he's repelled by it. Well that's exact you know, that's why I'm such a quick writer, but this these are the you know, that's what I want to explore. I mean, that's what took me a long time to build, and what fascinates me is, again, how we all function. I I guess I'm very... I grew up religious, and I get... It's, it's both fascinating and terrifying to me to just be of the world, that, every, that nothing is clear. You know, nothing is... You know, things are all... Again, there's different ideas. I'm very interested in ideas of purity and or perfection. You know, this idea... Like, the perfect is imperfect because it's of this world, and therefore, if it was too perfect that it would no longer be human and therefore be, you know, these things flip in my head all the time. So I very much was interested in this idea that, yes, he is the keeper of this memory. He is the one who loves these people, who is dedicated to their memory, keeping it alive. And yet he is also, you know, the way we, again, the way things are imperfect, he's also the one who feels, <laughs> you know, that he's the only one responsible enough to destroy it, which is why this is an upside down world. The book is, you know, filled with those conflicts. But that's what I was exploring. And as he's erasing the faces of the tombstone, there's this in in and he's the you know, the bottom rung of society. At the top rung there's this plastic surgeon who is literally erasing faces 
uh, gentiling Jews, yeah. uh, essentially. There's his history as tied to the prostitutes, right? That's and family history, and then there's you know community, uh, you know, to the Buenos Aires, and then the Jews, and then Argentine history. I'm following all these things of how we remember an identity, and one thing which is sort of the our natural history, which is looks. I mean, that's our you know we use DNA as a whole different term now, but this is who we are. And I really thought about the history of the face and what it is. Argentina is very obsessed with plastic surgery as is America now. But just this idea, I thought, what is it to obliterate the face? It really is an erasure of your future and your past. Because that's what this book also is about, is why I got interested in it disappeared, is it's not an assault on someone's good name, which is one element of it. And it's not a trying to destroy someone in the present or the future. They undid these people. It was as if they were not to the, you know, to their neighbors, to them. They were just gone, and in a sense, to do that, to change the face is also, you know, it is a real break with the time and space continuum. The book is The Ministry of Special Cases. It's the first novel from Nathan Englander, remember the name. <laughs> the Ministry of Special Cases, published by Canuck.